Tonight, as we begin our Advent season with our Wednesday night services, the psalmist prays, praying, I lift my eyes up into the hills, and where does my help come? We've said that very many times, so it goes on, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And during this Advent season, our eyes are lifted from the valley of everyday living to the mountain of the Lord, from where our help comes. When we turn to that mountain to see how God kept his promise to send his Messiah, one to deliver us from our sins. And God truly kept his, thought, his, his promise. And he delivered us from sin and death and Satan. On these next three Wednesdays, we'll be looking at very important figures to the Christmas story. And tonight, we look at the character Zachariah. Next Wednesday, there will be Mary, and final Wednesday, Elizabeth. So let us come to the mouth of the Lord as we stand and sing the advent of our God. <laughs> Oh, 
Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we pray our Lord Jesus Christ that you light that comes into the world to enlighten everyone. Bless us as we light the candle of hope tonight on this Advent week in preparation for your coming. And so enkindle our hearts with the fire of your love that we may, we may receive you with joy and gladness and evermore remain steadfast in the faith. Who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we ask you to bless this week this year as we begin our Advent season. In Jesus' name, Amen. And as we sing this, light the candle of hope, uh, yeah, the first candle will be lit. time to silently and publicly confess our sins and we come in silence first. Lord, hear the confessions of our hearts. Heavenly Father, while I look at read and promise to support, my sinful nation wars against my faith, freely my sin that would condemn me. Eternally separating me from your gracious presence. Encourage and strengthen my faith daily that I may continue to confess that Jesus is my hope, creating me a new heart, O Lord. That I may forever believe in the incarnation of your only God's Son. Father, forgive my previous fault in Jesus Christ, my Lord, and may his unchanging grace and righteousness cover me today and forever. Sing one verse. Because of what Christ has done for us, through his incarnation, death, and resurrection, we can dare to look to the Heavenly Father for hope, grace, compassion, and forgiveness. Christ, the Holy God, the Son, bears the punishment we deserve, and he transforms our lives with his forgiveness. So therefore, we receive God's declaration of pure grace. As a called ordained servant of the word, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are forgiven. The Heavenly Father fills us with hope, joy, and peace in Christ. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit. Continue with the reasons. Good evening. Good evening. The reading comes from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, from high roots of branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness, he will judge the needy. With justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together. And a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together. And the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's stand. And a young child will put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hope. The Lord is not only our hope, but he fills our lives with hope. As we search God's word, it is a blessing not only to hear those words, but also speak them and believe them. We come together proclaiming that Jesus Christ is our hope. Find rest, O oh my soul, in God alone, my hope comes from Him. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. We also rejoice in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given. Rejoice for hope. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. So that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is our hope. This is the faith-producing, faith-strengthening, and hope-filled word of the Lord. I think I'll just let you sit for the gospel tonight, because it's a long one. It's the story of Zacharias found in Luke chapter 1, and... Uh, 
It's about seventy verses long. <laughs> In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. And both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all of God's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once when Zacharias the vision was not new, and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by Lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and to burn incense. And when the time for the burning of the incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying in Messiah. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When the Zacharias saw him, he was startled by the script of him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife will bear you a son, and you will call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never going to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit of the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents of, to their children and their dis disobedience to the wisdom of the righteous to be made ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, How can I be sure of this? I'm an old man, my wife is well along in years. The angel said, no, I'm Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you do not believe my words, which will come true at that appointed time. Well, meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah, wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he did not speak to them. They realized he must have seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. And after this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant, and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In those days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. When it was time for Elizabeth to have the baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy and had shared her joy. You know, on the eighth day, when it was came to circumcise the child, they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, No, he is to be named John. And they said to her, There is no one among your relatives who has him. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, His name is John. Immediately his mouth was open, and his tongue set free. And he began to speak, praising God. All the neighbors were filled with awe. And throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone who heard this wondered about and asked him, What then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. His father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servitude. As though he threw his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. The oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hands of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear. So in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the most high. For you go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, and he lived in the wilderness until he appeared publicly to Israel. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
or Sterling McCann is uh, at uh, Harvey Gladstone. And during the sun, we'll also take, bring, up, bring our offerings to the Lord. Savior Jesus. Tonight we talk about how the crystal sword descends, and we look at the candle of hope tonight, and we talk about Zechariah, the preparer of the preparer of Jesus. It's hard to say, preparer of the preparer, but I did it. And here we are on this first Advent Wednesday, and uh, as through these Wednesdays, as already explained you, we'll look at different biblical characters. But tonight we look at Zachariah and the theme of hope. And uh, in that reading, that long reading, there's really three parts to it. And I want to break those parts up a little bit tonight. And the very first part we see is that Zachariah fall, fell from righteousness. Now Zachariah was a priest, and why someone says, Well, what's a priest? Priests are basically pastors in the Old Testament before Jesus came and started his church. And a priest's job was many of the things that pastors are supposed to do. They're supposed to teach the Bible, they are to pray for people, that set examples for the people in how they live and love God, and they were the church services in the, in the temple. And so to summarize, a priest's job is to present God to the people. I mean, think about that. Present God to the people. That's really what all of our jobs are the same do the same thing, and we're going to look closer at that. Now, there were a lot of priests back then. It was recorded that in the days of King David, there were as many as 24,000 of them. And uh, the Lutheran Church could use a few of those priests today, couldn't we? At the time of Zechariah, there probably was even more. And so why so many priests? Well, if you understand, the idea in the Bible is that every person is supposed to have a personal act and today, we have to realize that that's a lot, a lot of people don't want that. They don't want to be a part of the assembly. They don't want to be a part of the family. And therefore, they're not a, part of, not a part of the family or part of the pastor. And that's another uh, situation that needs to be corrected. Now, a pastor is not just a guy who stands up front with the people preaching on Sunday or on Wednesday nights. He is to be someone who is to watch over one's souls and to know the details of people's lives, and uh, they go to them, go to them, their pastor for strength, support, counsel, wisdom, and prayer. And uh, if you think about that, that's why every Christian really needs to have a pastor in their lives. Now, one of the priest's duties back then was to be available to service in the temple in Jerusalem if needed. Zechariah got that opportunity. I came only through casting lots to go to the temple to burn incense in the holy place. And getting chosen by casting lots is sort of like rolling the dice or drawing the, the straw, drawing straws. And the point of it is this is a huge opportunity. It's very rare. 
And uh, the chances of getting shoulders is about the same as winning the lottery. And as well as Zachariah is now doing his job, that God starts the Christmas story. And here's really the beginning of the Christmas story. By announcing it to Zechariah, who was true to his Jewish culture. I can say this because we are told that Zechariah was not only a Jewish priest, but he was married to a woman of righteousness whose father also was a priest. And in fact, Scripture says that he and his wife were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. You can't have a higher standard than that. That's uh, pretty awesome. So, what happens? Then goes Zachariah into the holy place, sees an angel. The angel tells him that his old wife, who can't get pregnant, is going to have a son, and that his son is going to prepare the way for the arrival of the Lord in the world. Now, I don't know if you understand how huge this is, how awesome this is. I don't even know the word to use it tonight, because there's been no visions, no angelic appearances, no prophecies, no nothing. For 400 years, God has been completely silent. And the people thought God had forgotten them. And Zechariah is the very first person God decided to tell that he is about to send his son, Jesus, into the world. And that his son will set things up for God's son. This is amazing. So Advent really begins with the story of Zechariah. But Zachariah, what's he do? He blows it. He doesn't believe it. He says, how can I be sure of this? Whoa. He says, I'm an old man. My wife is well along in years. There's absolutely no way to sit down. Can you believe it? You just had an angel appear before you and you don't believe it. Mom, believe I would, wouldn't you? Ha ha ha. <laughs> we think we went though with you, pal. But a lot of times I've heard people say things like, if I could only see Jesus in my own eyes, I would believe. And my response to it is, no, you wouldn't. Because Jesus appeared after the resurrection to more than 500 people. And yet on the day of Pentecost, how many believers were gathered together in one place? Only 120. What happened to those other 380 plus? They didn't believe. The truth is that such a sentiment already reflects a hardness of heart that would explain away anything that did happen. Not to mention it would mean, mean it would demean the greatness and significance of Jesus coming into the world if he had to come in every generation just to read convince us. So tonight, what I want you to understand is your relationship with God is really a heart and a faith matter. So, where's your heart this Christmas? Where's your faith? Now, you don't want to tick off an angel. <laughs> Go to 2 Kings 19. It says that one angel killed 185,000 soldiers single handedly in one night. So, you don't want to do that. You don't want to get an angel mad. But Zechariah still did not believe. And when we read, it says, And the angel answered him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And now you will be silent and unable to speak until the day it happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at that point in time. And all of a sudden, Zechariah can speak. His voice is fine. Now, for a pastor, that's bad news. What would be like if I could speak to somebody who probably said it would be great? But it's Zechariah, because he can't speak in the past. He can't minister to his people. He can't communicate. So the people were wondering what happened to Zechariah. Because after all, for instance, he was supposed to come out onto the steps of the temple and pray and, and share the message. But he can't. All you do is do some sign language gestures and people don't understand what he's doing. But the story of Zachariah is Paul ought to remind us that none of us are ever too good that we cannot and have not fallen in the field. 
would all fall short of the glory of God. We must believe and we must trust the promises of God for us. And our goal and our calling in life as followers of Jesus is to believe and to present him to the world. 2 Peter 2 9. And can you put this? This is a verse that was very important to me when I was around 15, 16. And it's been important all my ministry. Read it together with me. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of Greeks, and no possession. You may proclaim the access of him who called the of darkness into his marvelous life. You. I remember my past, Frederick, we see at the time that you, this is at the point of baptism, you were called. At the point of baptism, you became a priest. You are the priest. You have the gospel within you. You have a story to tell. At least it's the point, too. Zacharias faith in God's promise. And here we find a father who passes on his faith to his family. It's kind of my favorite part of the story, I guess you could say. Elizabeth was barren without child. It was a barren scene. But when she finally got pregnant, the angel said to her that said she would. She said, the Lord has shown his favor and taken one by disgrace among the people. So now Elizabeth has her baby, and it comes time to name the baby. And Zachariah has been mute now for nine months. During this time, he's had a lot of time to fall over all that has happened. And over the angel's words, and now what's he going to do? You take off an angel once, you're not going to take him off a second time. <laughs> well, he named his son John. His friends and family are saying, Well, you got to call Zachariah. He's got to be Zach. You know, you got to do this. You got to continue with the name. Something changed in Zachariah's heart. What changed was, so I think, the word repentance. He repented. He knew he had been disobedient, that he hadn't trusted the words of God from the angel as he had was instructed. And he takes out a tablet and he writes down the name John. And immediately Zechariah is able to speak. His mouth opens up, he's still able to speak, and he begins and blessing God and praising God. And the word spreads and anticipation begins to build. And all these things were talked about through all the help of Judea, and all who heard them laid them on their hearts, saying, What then will this child be? For the hand of the Lord is with him. Here, Zachariah, just naming his son John, is perhaps the greatest act of spiritual leadership in his entire life. More than all the privileges of teaching the Bible, praying for, counseling people, even more than getting to go to the holy place and offer incense, was this fact that he followed. That demonstrates his faith in the promises of a living God. And in the process, he passes on his faith to his son. And when Zechariah names John, he seals his destiny. And Zechariah is determined to raise John up, teaching him about the special calling of life. The special calling was to prepare the way of the Lord, to prepare the way for Jesus. The very end of the chapter actually. We're not positive, but it kind of indicates that Zechariah may have even moved and taken his family into the outskirts of the city or out into the wilderness in order to prepare. For fathers here, fathers to be, if there are any, the greatest thing you can do for your family is to pass on the day to your children, to teach them to trust the word of God, to look to the Savior Jesus. To pass that thing on to the next generation. And that's getting harder and harder every day. We can't give up. Well, this is the third part Zacharias, filling of the Holy Spirit. A problem points everyone to Jesus. And our last point, again, this last point, Zacharias, is filled with the Holy Spirit. We know how important the Holy Spirit's in our life because no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And truly, the Holy Spirit was there. And here you see Zachariah's prophecy given to him by God. It's not only beautiful in its arrangement, but it's superb in the depth and presentation of the gospel. There are mainly two points of this prophecy. The first part looks backward to past prophecies of the Messiah, 
would come and the second part looks forward to the role that his son John will have in this all. So let's look at a couple of these things, the past promises. It tells us that the Messiah who was to come was to redeem his people. Redemption, crucial, the buying back. We are gods because God made us, but we all turned and turned away from God and said that because of that, we needed to be bought back. And so the Messiah would do something to do, buy us back once again. And Jesus the Messiah did that. Not because he had to, but because he loved us and he went to the cross and died there in our place so that we could be gone with him. Secondly, the Messiah is to be a form of salvation and that topic, all that title always is kind of strange. But a horn is a symbol of strength, and horn animals are very strong. So the Messiah would save us by his great strength. And it would take great strength by Jesus, who would be mocked, misunderstood, beaten, mistreated. And yet he would go all the way to the cross to die for us. Why? Because we're not strong enough to save ourselves. We can't, we wouldn't last, we wouldn't make it. That's why we're here tonight, because we need Jesus to save us. Thirdly, the Messiah frees us to serve God in righteousness and holiness. When the power of sin is broken in our lives, we then live out of love for Jesus and God's righteousness and holiness and starts filling our lives. Zachariah was led to write this about his son John, that he would be a prophet of the most time. And when Jesus came to be baptized by John, what did he when Jesus started approaching him, what did John say? He said, Behold, the Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world. Zechariah also said that John would go before the Lord to prepare his ways. And when John was ministering to the people, calling them to repent, he, he said these words. He says, He who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. You see, the message of John is everything in all, in all of its being. It's not about us. It's always about Jesus. Always about Jesus. John didn't mess around calling sins mistakes. I heard a preacher the other day on the radio saying, Our sins are just a bunch of mistakes. John will laugh at him. A sin is a sin that needs to be redeemed and needs to be paid for and repented of. The message of John is that we need salvation, we need our sins to be forgiven. We need him to be wiped out, and the only way is through the blood of Jesus. And lastly, John would bring the light which would guide people into the way of peace. John the disciple, Jesus said this about John the Baptist. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. The message of John is that Jesus is the light who calls us out of darkness and into him and gives us peace. What an amazing prophecy. The interesting thing about Zachariah's prophecy is that it's really still all about Jesus. Even the parts that are about the son of John are really all about Jesus. Jesus coming into the world next to the cross and the resurrection is the single greatest event in history. In fact, these three events all go together as one. Incarnation, crucifixion, resurrection, they all, one, by themselves, are nothing. It's only as they are put together that they become everything. So as we sum up Zechariah's prophecy, what do we find out about Zechariah tonight? That he's a true prophet, that he's a true teacher, that he's a true pastor, but he did through it all. It was always still all about Jesus. Looking to Jesus, loving Jesus, trusting Jesus, everything is about Jesus. And the greatest thing we can do for anyone is to point them to Jesus. So who have you decided to bring along with you this Advent journey to point them you know, to the cross to see Jesus? Zechariah is a great example of that. He left a common legacy written down for all time, which does just that. So as we've looked at the life of Zechariah, the first person God ever announced is coming in the world to, in many ways, his story and the story of every follower of Jesus is the same, including ours here tonight. We're a people who have fallen from righteousness, but God has been gracious 
and he's given us the promise of his son. The man who never fell and yet gave up his life for you and me in our place so that we could be saved. And once we really, truly believe that, once we repent and put our faith into the promise like Zachariah did, then what's God going to do for us? He's going to fill us with his spirit. And he's going to enable us to start pointing people. There's Jesus. This is what Jesus is about. You need to know Jesus. He died on the cross for your sins. And that's the prophecy of hope. Hope found in Jesus. Because that's what it's all about. It's all about Jesus. And we are people of hope. Because we know that Jesus is the reason for the season. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us stand for prayers. O oh Lord, let my prayer rise before you as incense. As the day ends, O oh Lord, and not your spirit depart from us. Hear our prayer for forgiveness for all we have done wrong this day. Do not turn away from us, for we need your presence every hour. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. Prepare our hearts, O Lord, for the coming of the Lord. Keep us vigilant and watchful that when he comes again in power and glory, he may find us faithful. But my prayer lies before you as incense. Lord, it's over our loved ones, we pray. For all those who are absent this time. For those who are in need of healing. Especially in place. Uh, Eric Pearson was in, just before service, he was taken to the hospital with uh, breathing issues. And my niece, Sherry, who has been put into hospice care. There are many others on that prayer list, Lord, and many of our own loved ones, and we ask you to defend them from all danger, to guard them from every evil. But my prayer lies before you as incense. And taught by our Lord, we are bold to pray now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us the same of the day of the day, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not out of temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the name is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. We have many more. As we join together as we pray with this evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ, through your Son, that you have grace to be kept on this day. And I pray that you are forgiving all my sins. I have done well, and grace to keep you this time. For if you repent, I'm coming to myself, my body, soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, and you will call your heavenly power over me. Amen. And again, thank you for being here tonight and what a nice turnout. May the Lord continue to bless our advent walk together. And so I'll receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and grace unto you. May the Lord look upon you and spirit give you his peace. Amen. We proceeded just for a brief announcement so that you get these dates. Next Sunday, uh, next Wednesday, we will be doing looking at Mary. And the final Wednesday, the 20th, is Elizabeth. Other events coming up. Uh, next slide. Uh, children for uh, Sunday school practices. Our Sunday school children's program is on the 17th, so we need your children here on Sunday mornings at 9 15 to practice. Youth are busy at it again, and they have a rummage sale this uh, Saturday here at the church. If you want to rent a table, uh, $20. Randy's here, he can give you directions. And it's uh, Oh, it's from 8 to 12, right? 8 to 12 or 8 to 1, okay. It's what, 1? 8 to 1. Okay, Christmas Carol is going up. The sign-up sheet is out there. Uh, and uh, that, it's a fun event. And next is uh, our Heaven Sent group. Uh, they're always looking for volunteers. We'll go down and feed the homeless. Uh, that's Saturday, December 23rd. So next time we're going down there. And we the parking lot at 10:30. If you want to come, it's 
Uh, Andy's not here tonight, but Randy has some information on that too. Uh, next, Holy Cross Christmas Eve services. We made decisions. <laughs> 10 30 in the morning and 7 o'clock at night. We're going to do two. Okay? So it's 10 30 in the morning and 7 in the evening. And then Christmas Day, we'll gather back here the next slide at 10 a.m. I think that's oh, there's one more slide. It's for for the new event to January, uh, the next first event really uh, the New Year's of the album and all missions are meeting will be uh, after church on January 7th. Uh, so we got that in now about a month away, so we start putting them up. And now we can stand and we're singing our closing song in the way of angel. Well, our peace is here in the Lord.